Hi there everybody and welcome along. This is a lovely new project we're starting today and it's always exciting when you start new projects I think. It's very similar to, well yeah very similar let's leave it at that, to the other file folios that we've done um, but this time, this time it is Edith. <laughs> I love Edith, I just love it so much. My intention was to use my CD CD-ROM that I have that is the Country Diary and it's full of of beautiful images uh, and I did print some out and then I thought no I'm actually going to use the book the actual book so I have a couple of um, I've got three actually books um, out ready to go this uh, you'll see me making this on on other file folder videos it's just it's one of these file folders obviously full height and you cut it off and I cut mine off at I think it's eight and three quarters uh, yeah eight and three quarters which just allows me a piece of A4 with a quarter of an inch top and bottom uh, if you're using letter do the same measure your letter and just add a quarter of an inch top and bottom and it'll be it'll make life easier I've put some magnets in just to hold the front piece, the front flap in place. And I've put them on now, so if I want to cover them over, I'm already done. I don't need to worry about them. So this is the front. Then we've got a spine. This is the back. Then this is the flap. This is the flap. This is the centre back. And this is the front. So um, it's all very straightforward. After I've cut the uh, file out and marked it, scored it where I want the spines to be, I've just used framers tape, gone over all the edges and down the spines, and then I've stamped, um, it was just a little flower stamp that I had, and I used archival ink to, to stamp that, so we're ready to go. So I'm going to start, uh, oh yeah, and there's two flaps as well, that's, I've got to tell you about those. They go, they've got the spines scored in them and they go there and there and held together with a button and string closure. So right, that's that. So let's make a start uh, on the back. So this is the outside back piece and I've decided to put a, uh, an envelope on with a gusset with a button and string closure and I'm going to make it out of a surplus piece of the file folder because it's nice and sturdy um, and I've already cut out two inch circles um, I've cut them twice and stuck two together just to make it nice and firm and inked around the edge with uh, vintage photo distress ink right so this I have cut to the measurement that I want it's about an eighth of an inch in from each, from where the spine crease is on each side and this is what I've got this piece of file folder now that's not much help to us really when we're making a, this envelope it's I mean you know that that's it it's not re not really a great help so we need to decide where we want the front flap to come up to and how far we want this flap to fold over so you're just going to have to ignore that, like it's not even there. Um, and we'll fold new creases in where we want them. So if I were to put that there, for example, the front flap would be that. And I could do with it being a bit more than that. So let's move it down to there and see what that looks like. Yeah, that might be all right. And then this is the top bit that gets folded over. So let's, I'll measure that for you so as you know where it is and I'm going to mark it for myself so I know where to crease it so I'm going to mark it there and oh, and that's about an eighth of an inch in from the bottom and this is about an eighth of an inch in from the top so my um, turning up bit at the bottom measures six and a quarter and at the top it measures 
uh, just a little over three and a half, three and five eighths. So let's put that on the uh, scoreboard and crease those lines in. It's quite thick this uh, file that I've got. It's 315 GSM, so you know it's uh, it's sturdy stuff. Mr. F got them for me at a car boot sale, uh, and he bought 500. <laughs> so I have I have quite a lot. So I'm marking this. My mark actually comes between two of the score lines when that's pressed right up against the edge. So I'm marking it at six and an eighth. I'm going to fold it over and mark it on the other side just to make it easier. There we are. So let's crease that in first. And before you crease it really down, burnish it, make sure it's absolutely square. Because sometimes on a scoreboard things can come out not exactly where you wanted them. I mean, they're never far off, but sometimes they're just not exactly right. So there we are. I'm happy with that. Don't worry about this um, existing crease that was in when you bought it. That will, um, it'll all get stuck down. It'll be fine. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's going to look okay there. Yeah, I'm just going to double check that that mark at the top is where I want it and actually I want it in it's like sod's law this when you start to video you cough I don't know what I don't know what that's about it happens to everybody so I take solace in the fact it's not just me so I'm just going to put that uh, folded line into the corner and then mark this one here Turn it over and score it again. Just loosens on such a thick card, it just loosens the weave up a bit, gives you a chance to get it folded over. I'm just going to do it this way because I'm left handed. So fold it over, make sure it's really square like that. So there we are. So let's have a look and see what this looks like. If we've made the right decisions. So that's going to go there, and that's the bottom of the envelope. And this is yay! Look, I like that. I think that I think those proportions are really good. Good. Please, I like it. <laughs> right. So how are we going to decorate this? This is the thing. Well, inside it's green, and I don't really have too much of a problem with that, but when you lift the, fl the flap up, do you want to see green? Maybe not. So we probably need a piece of paper in there, a piece of design paper in there that um, you, you see when you open the flap. So let's have a look through Edith and see what we've got. This is always a joy to look through Edith and see what you've got. Um, Probably something along those lines because I don't want to. I don't want to use my best images up. Um, this is a page that often gets left. This one with the water hen or moor hen on it. I'm just wondering whether that would suit our purposes quite well there. Mm, yeah, possibly actually. If I move that right up, yeah, I think that might be so. Uh, to remove your pages with minimal disruption to your book and the other pages, find the middle of the signature and the sewn in on Edith and get your quick unpick tool if you have one. Uh, this was a tip given to me somebody the other day and it's, it's fabulous. And just slice through the threads.
and that then will slacken those pages on that signature. So they just they just come out really easily. There are some that are stuck in though, so let's hope that's not the one we want. Yeah, this is the one that's stuck in, wouldn't you know it? Um, but we'll just be careful with it. Right, okay. I'll pop those back in there, keep them nice and safe. Well, by that I mean flat. I don't think anybody's going to come into the house and steal my Edith Holden images. But you never know. So they're in the book. Right, let's have a look at this then. This is a beautiful book. It's so sort of aged around the edges and the colour of the paper is gorgeous. It's um, obviously been around quite a while. So let's see, that's the bottom and that would suit us well because that's where our pocket's coming up to. So let's just say, let's just measure it and see what we've got. It measures six and seven eighths. So I want to cut a piece off here that's six and seven eighths. And I'm going to do the full um, page length of it. So if I do that there, six and seven eighths is going to take me over the page. So six and seven eighths there. Is that right? Seems like a lot. That seems like an awful lot. Five and seven eighths. See, knew it was too much. Right, let's try again then. So five and seven eighths brings it to there. From there to there. I think that's not, not bad really. I think that bird's pretty much in the middle. Our lovely moor hen. So I'm going to cut that off there, seven eighths down there, just a smidge that way, right. So I'll get straightened up down the bottom. I keep moving it, <laughs> I don't know why. Because this is so nicely coloured, I would advise that you hang on to all these strips. I mean, this has got a number on it, so it's like gold dust. So don't throw your, what would appear to be waste, don't throw them out. So line this up again and cut it off at five and seven eighths. So there we are. I mean, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Never gets used, this one. It just never gets used. I don't know why. I, well, maybe other people use it, but I, I don't. So if I were to put that on there, like that, then when you fold that up, that's perfect. That's what you see. That's, that's great. Why wow, that worked out better than I thought it would. You don't get to see this part, but if I moved it up so as you could see this part, we're a bit near the bottom there. I think you might see that. So no, let's let's stick to there, top at the top, and get that stuck on. Now for this project, I'm going to use vintage photo ink. Um, I have in the past used bundled sage, and the project does have a greeny kind of hint to it, but I'm going to use Vintage Photo. So I'm not going to go mad with it because I love the aging that's on that page already. But obviously the edges are more aged than the bit that we've just cut so I need to unify it somehow so I'm going to ink around it. But as you can see I'm not going bananas with it. I'm really pleased to be using this Mohan because he does kind of get left out of things. Oh, 
Okay, there we go. Right, so I'm going to glue this on and I'm going to use my collal because um, it's quite a big area. And I will appreciate, I'm sure, the fact that I can sort of move it around a little bit. That it's uh, not a sort of one and done. I mean, these are really pretty on their on their own, but once again, I very seldom use them. I sometimes fussy cut them, um, but, you know. Talking of fussy cutting, this morning I had an idea, <laughs> and I've got the Tim Holtz field stamps, as you know. Um, I ordered them from America. They took about 20 years to get here. I'd kind of given up hope on them, actually. But when they arrived, oh, they did not disappoint. They are absolutely beautiful. My favourite set of stamps ever. And uh, I thought this morning, oh, stamp on Edith. That would be nice. You know, I can use the field notes. And then I thought, well, you won't really see it. So I decided that what I would do, and I'll show you in a sec, is stamp them all out. Lovely. This may need a little, little bit of trimming. It may, it may not. We're right up to the edges. We're doing okay. So I'm just going to get a wet wipe and just get that surplus bit of glue there. Nobody will ever see it, but we know it's there. So we'll wipe it up. There we are. Now, just while we're waiting for that to dry a little bit, I'll show you the uh, the labels that I've made this morning. Here they are. There's loads of them. I just stamped my Tim Holtz stamps out onto a piece of cream card and then I cut them out. Some I cut out with my deco edge scissors, some I cut out square. Um, but aren't they fabulous labels? They're just the job. Just the job. And there's, there's loads more there, but can't pick them up for some reason. So I, I'd stamped out the entire set. Stamped that one twice, but that's the only one. Um, and I'm really pleased with them. I think it would be quite handy for this project. Hope so, anyway. So let's have a look at you then, Mr Moorhen. So we need to put this crease in again, but go quite steady because sometimes the paper underneath, especially if it's wet, wants to buckle a little bit. But that's doing all right, I think. So pop it over like that. Just make sure that it's not misbehaving. No, that's doing really nice. I'm going to wait for the for it to be really dry before I burnish it in. But I'm just noticing that there's odd, tiny little bits um, that need trimming up. There, there's something and nothing, but I might as well keep it tidy as we go along. Anything else? Oh, there's a little bit down here. Okay, there we are. So that's nice and neat and tidy. No, that was all right. Right, so the next thing is that this is going to come up. Doesn't that look great when you open that and you see that? It'll gladden your heart. Well, it would gladden mine. But I realise not everybody's as keen on Edith as I am. Uh, right, so we need to put in... Well, we need to decorate this first. Now, because I have got two books, I'm going to use two books. And I'm going to put that image there, and then I'm going to match it with the image on the top. That's the plan. I've never done this before, so I don't really know if it works or not. But, you know, we'll try. 
So I want that on the top, right up to the where the flower starts, and down that flap, and then I can do the bottom flap to match. Oh my goodness me, I just don't, don't know where to begin, really. Let's just remeasure this width once again. I think it's five and seven eighths, but you can never be too careful. So it is five and seven eighths, as I prophesied. So I want a piece out of here that's five and seven eighths. So if I go over to there, five and seven eighths, yeah, I can move that way a little bit. Um, five and seven eighths is there. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that there, I think. Yeah, okay, let's cut that then. Again, save these bits. I know it seemed, well, that bit's probably not worth much, but just save them. I'll feel better knowing that you're saving them. <laughs> and get that as exact as you can. Right. There we go. Now this is going to be the bit for the top, but we want the bottom cut off exactly the same. So that's going to go there. Well, it's going to go slightly, it's going to fold over there just so we can get it glued on nicely. So that's going to go there. So we want the other one to be exactly the same. So it's going to meet up properly. So how does one do this? Well, I've got words down here to help me. But they're slightly different. I don't want to just go for it because if it's not right it's really not going to be right yeah that's well, this is a bit that I chopped off. Let's see if that's any help. Yeah, okay. So I'm happy to go there. Because that's the bit that, that I chopped off. It's level with the edge. Right, okay. When you do that, it doesn't meet up, look. These must be different additions and just be slightly different. Oh, that might spoil my plans. Never mind. Let's let's make a mark there. And make a mark here. And let's just be brave. We'll just be brave about it all. This is worrying, isn't it? <laughs> Wouldn't it be marvellous if all we had to worry about was lining bits of paper up? That would be fabulous. Right, so let's just put that on there. Double check that everything's okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that mark. Because if we're a millimetre out, we might as well be a mile. Just won't look right. Okay. Oh, now let's have a look. See if these sort of line up at all. Well, I don't think they're far out if they're out in the slightest. So, 
First thing to do then is to stick this on there. Yeah, well, ink it probably. And then stick that so as the bit from the top of that flower is just going to go over that fold so we're stuck on. Sorry about that little hiccup. The uh, Amazon man came. <laughs> Which is always happy days, isn't it? Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over, create a crease there at the top of this flower. So let's get the scoreboard out. It's probably the safest way of me doing that, I think. So it's there. It's about there. It's about three eighths, I think. Yep, yeah, about three eighths of an inch. There we go. I'm just going to crease it just a little bit on the other side. Let's make it easier to deal with. There we go. So that's going to get folded over like that and it's going to fold over that crease there. Okay. We're motoring. So, with that in place, I can now mark off where I want this to come to. Actually, what I'm going to do is glue that, glue that down. It's going to just make life a little bit easier. And I'm all for that. So let's glue that in position and then it can't move on us. So I'm just using my PVA, ordinary PVA glue for this, trying to keep costs down. So I'm just going to introduce that to that. Make sure that folds over where we want it to. Like that. And then, as they say around here, jobs are good. Un. I think I can, that's now dry enough, the mohen, and it's not creased, so I can burnish that down now. Lovely. Right, so let's fold that up and see where we need to mark this at. I'm probably making a bit of a mountain out of a molehill here. But given that I haven't done this before, I really want to get it right, obviously. So, actually, I think the thing to do is take my knife to it. Yikes! Right, so that's pushed in as far as I can get it. So I'm just going to take my knife and cut along there. Wish me luck. And breathe. Yeah, there we go. That's grand. So I can stick that down now. I'm going to use the collar because it's quite a large area. So I'm learning with this one as I go along. So maybe it might be a good idea to watch this video to the end, actually, in case it doesn't work. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> or in case I change something dramatically. I've done that before when you're following along somebody's video with them and uh, they get nearly to the end and go, oh, oh, that doesn't fit. Oh, well, we'll just change. No, no. Right, so let's just flop that over there. Make it as flat as we can. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, it looks so nice. Edith is just, you're going to get sick of me saying that, but Edith is just so lovely. Right, so there we are. I'm just going to uh, round the corners on that. Um, maybe I'm oh not here. I thought I'd done the unthinkable and put it away. Hmm. It's blocked up. Oh, 
Oh, doesn't want to cut that. There we go. Ooh. So yeah, I'm going to ink around that. Am I? No. I might put the bottom piece on first. That corner around. I didn't want to round that corner, I can tell you. Right, so this piece is going to go exactly where this piece ends. This is going to be fun and frolics, isn't it? I'm not really sure how to do this. A little bit more. Is it at the bottom? Am I right at the bottom? Uh, just up a down a touch, I should say. A little touch more. I think that's about it. Is that square? Yeah, you can see it doesn't, it just doesn't meet up. And the only reason I can give you for that is it's two different editions and a slightly different size. But I'm pretty sure I can live with that. Yeah, I, I am actually. I'm pretty sure I can live with that. I mean, this stem, I can't move it over because I haven't got the space on that side. To move it over. See I'm coming away from the edge there which I don't want to do. I want that square. So yeah that's going to be the best that we can do. So I need to cut that off. Well I can, I can do the same thing again actually. I can just fold it over. So that's where it's going. So let's just fold this over there. Lovely. So we just need to glue that in place. There. Yeah, I'm quite happy. Looks quite good. Looks as good as I can get it, is, is all I can tell you. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue along here. It'll just stabilise the whole thing, hopefully. I'm sure you can probably think of better ways of doing this. I'm sure there are better ways. This is the first time I've done it, so I'm just going steady. Okay, so that's stuck on. Let's just make sure that is stuck right. Okay, okay, okay. So now we need to cut this off like we did the last piece, level with that. And I think the knife trick worked relatively well. I'll just put the top of my PVA. It's a tense one today, isn't it? Hey, it's really tense. <laughs> oh dear, who'd have thought paper crafting could have been quite so tense. So let's just cut that along there, level with the file. There we go. Right, so that's that. That's that. Looks nice. After all that, yeah, it was a bit of a trauma, but it really does look nice. Now, let me just try it on the back of here and hope that it fits, because if not, I'll have a total hissy fit. No, that's lovely. That is exactly what I wanted. Blimey. So, when you open it, you see that lovely moor hen. 
that's just grand, just grand. Let's crease everything in where we want it. Lovely. Um, and let's put on the, ah, you see, I cut that with the knife, but it's not exactly square. So I'm just going to have to square that up a little bit. Let's just get a straight edge along here. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing. Most people wouldn't notice it, I'm sure, but I would, so, so it's a goner. Lovely. Yeah, pleased, yeah, pleased. Right, okay, so let's make the gussets then next. That's the next thing to do. So back to our uh, green folder. That's probably, this is probably enough, this remnant from another, from another day. And I want them at two inches, but I need to work out how long I want them. So they're gonna go, let's just check that square. I haven't glued that down yet, that's probably why. Um, I need to glue that down next, that's the next job. I've forgotten I hadn't done it. <laughs> so back to the collar because it's a big area, it sticks well, and it's so easy to apply in these uh, sugar bell bottles. I was really lucky, Tony, the lovely Tony Vince had ordered some from America. She'd ordered two, and she gave me one of them. I'm so grateful to you, Tony. Thanks very, very much. I use it every day without fail. So let's just get that down in its correct position. Steady. Right, so I've just got a little bit to trim off down there. Where it's kind of something and nothing. Overall, our measurements have been have been good. Yeah, that's great. Right, so now I'm, now I'm going to make the gusset. Um, and we want it from the top, but not all the way to the bottom. You've got to allow a sort of space at the bottom for it to open properly and close properly. So we want it from there down to uh, about there. And I need one for each side, obviously, and each one needs to be two inches wide. So let's cut this across there. That's the length we need, and that's one, two, three, four, five, five and a quarter inches. There we go. And I need two at two inches. Two inches wide so it's five and a quarter long and two inches wide and this one will be exactly the same five and a quarter by two and that really is just waste okay so get your scoreboards out or whatever it is you use to score a ruler and a butter knife will do nicely and we're going to score these at half inch marks. So half an inch, one inch, inch and a half. I'm going to fold it over and do the same thing for the reasons that I've explained to you before. Yeah. 
This one's got writing on. And so has that. I think we'll be alright actually. So same with this one. Uh, half an inch. One inch. One and a half inches. Fold it over and do the same thing all over again. Okay, now we can make our little gussets. So you take it and you fold it. First one back on itself. Next one back the other way. So you're just making a series of valleys and peaks. And try and get them lined up as you go. Because they do have a tendency to not want to line up. Despite the fact you've just measured them on the scoreboard, they can be get themselves out there quite a bit actually. So there we are. And finish that down. That one wants to walk. Pull it back over. It's quite difficult with this really thick card. So once it gets it into its head, that's where it wants to go. It's hard to persuade it, it's not. Right, so fold it in. And back. There we are. Right. So these are going to go down the side here from there. And you want the, the end piece for, uh, facing in. So you want it like that. And just at the top corner, where that's going to join, you just want to cut a V off it. Like that. So it's going to sit nicely there. So this one's going to go that way, with the edge pointing in. Um, and we want to cut a V off that one, that way. Yep. Okay, so they're going to get stuck on there now, and I'm going to use my Cosmic Shimmer because it's fairly quick. So all the way down that um, flat piece. and stick it right at the top and right at the edge like that it's just a little bit high up actually that's where I want it there right okay So I'm just going to put some clips on that, just for a couple of minutes, just till it uh, catches. Like so, um, and then we do the same, same thing to the other side. So you want the V at the top pointing out, and you, it's this flat piece here that we're going to glue. point at the top of the what will be an envelope and make sure your edge is square with the edge of the envelope lovely that's grand like that and press it down I'll just clip that one as well while we put the button and string closure on There we go. 
Right, so that's the gusset on, so that's going to go there, that's going to go there. Marvellous. Everything in the garden's looking rosy. I think I've just got a tiny little bit of green file here, which I don't want. So I'm just going to trim that off. I mean, it's like a mere nothing, <laughs> but I can see it, so it's not happening. There we go. That's better. Yeah. Okay, so now the um let's just put my skunking pin back in my cosmic shoe. Right, so the next thing to do now, unsurprisingly, is the closure. So we, we've we got our two, well, I did have two. I've got one. <laughs> There's another one somewhere. Where are you? Here it is. Um, these are going to go on the centre line, uh, where wherever it suits the pattern, really. And that, I think I want it down there so you can see that flower. I don't want it there hiding that pretty flower. That would just be um, nonsensical, really. So this, the, the cosmic shimmer should have dried by now. So I'm going to take the clips off, work out a center line that we want to uh, attach our buttons to. So we'll get your ruler out. And this, once again, and unsurprisingly, still measures five and seven eighths. So I need the half of that, which is two and a half, two and seven eighths, and a titchy bit. <laughs> yeah, two and seven eighths and a titchy, titchy bit. So I'm gonna put the marks for the line on the inside and that'll be my titchy bit. Right, so I think I want the center, let's just see. Yeah, about there. So I'm going to make a mark there. And this one, probably down there, I would say. Gives it long enough to see what, yeah, okay. So I'm going to mark that there. Right. This has been tense, hasn't it? <laughs> This is paper crafting on the edge. Well, I don't know if it is for you, it is for me. <laughs> right, so let's see if we can find the middle of these. And I never have very good luck with this. But let's say it's there. I'll put a mark there, because you never know. It might be somewhere near, right? Yeah, actually, that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to get my cropper down out. Put these together, hold them together like that, and go through, put that on the right setting, and go through both at the same time, assuming that centre is really right. Yeah, actually, you know, you know what? I don't think that's bad, which is quite staggering for me. Right, let's get my eyelets out. Oh, yes. I wanted to use green eyelets on Edith. And these eyelets have also been on a, on a voyage. Uh, when I ordered them, I thought I was ordering them on Prime and they were going to come the next day. <laughs> Three months later, they arrived. Three months later. I don't know. It didn't tell me where they'd come from. I have no idea. Um, but they're here now, so that's all right. And it's for 60 eyelets and there's 15 in each in each colour. So, use them sparingly, I would say, because who knows when you'd ever get any more. So which colour shall I go for? I think that darker green might be quite nice. Yeah, I'm going to go for the darker green. And make sure I put that in carefully. And try my hardest not to butcher this when I put it in. So I need to just make my holes where I 
mark them. I've had that happen before. I've got that. Um, so yeah, there. And this one. There. Let's just hope they're right. I mean, it's all I can do is wish upon a star. So I'll put that forward to the setting, setting, <laughs> the setting for setting. Put that on there. Do I need anything on the back? No. No, I don't think I do. I think I'll be all right at that. So what I do is I just press it down a little way till I can see that metal thing coming out and sort of hook it on it. And then it should be all right. And it is. Oh, marvellous. Marvellous, marvellous. I'll move my eyelets in a minute. I've just got to do this first. I'll push that through there. Hook it onto that metal thing. Oh, I must say, the We Are Memory Keepers eyelets are, are better. Better than any others I've ever used. They really crimp up nicely. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Oh, you want to see it opened up? Oh, there's a moor hen. <laughs> right, so we need to ink everywhere. Put that away. I'm so enamoured of my field labels that I've got them lying on the desk. And actually, they're a nuisance. But, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously not going to round these ones because I've got the gusset in the back. So everything gets inked. Everything is fair game to be inked. The Great Hairy Willow Herb. That sounds like a real insult, doesn't it? Great Hairy Willow Herb. <laughs> I might save that one for Mr F later. He's been very good and very quiet and... Um, I'm taking notes though. Oh, did you hear that? He's taking notes. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought he was engrossed in the cricket. <laughs> I thought I could get away with saying anything I liked. <laughs> Obviously not. Right, so that's that one. We don't need ink anything else there. Um, I've already inked the moor hen, but I did take a little shaving off there, so that needs to be inked again. And then round, round the top. So, you know, you, you might look at this and think, well, was it really worth it? Was it worth two pages of my Edith stuff uh, just to get a pocket that matches? Well, that's a decision only you can make. And if you've only got one Edith copy, then it's a bit of a moot point. For me, uh, yeah, I like it. I think it's worth it. Actually, I really do. So I'm just going to get a piece of uh, string stuff. I really need to order some more of this. Not this. I haven't got any jute left. So what I'm doing is just using this piece of burlap and just taking one piece off it every time I need some string for a button and loop. And I mean, I'm running out. I've got three left. So let's stick these down and then we can close it up. So back to the Cosmic Shimmer. Then we can decide if we want to put anything in it or not and what that would be that we would put in it. And the other side, you have to do both of these together, obviously.
Right, there we go. I'll just go in. Thank you. Um, so, you fold these up. Like so. Just like that. Give them a good press down. And I am going to clip them. just to aid the sticking. So one right at the bottom and one right at the top, that takes most of the pressure. It's fine like that. Lovely. So we just need to put our bit of string on. So before I do, I usually go around with my um, bone folder and just loosen it up from the page a little bit, just so you can use your string quite easily. So you just, I mean, you're not bending it up, you're just easing it up from the page. Some people put um, sort of cardboard washers in behind, behind the big one on the front. Um, I've never found that necessary, to be honest. I just sort of do that and it seems to work fine. So, put that behind your thing and we're going to tie this off firmly. So, what I usually do, and I'm sure it's overkill, is I tie one that way there and another one the other way round like a reef knot, right over left and left over right. And tie that. And then I go to the other side, which in this case is the top. And I do the same thing again, I tie a reef knot there. And I'm quite sure you don't need all these many knots, but it makes me feel more secure. There we are. Now we can get rid of this uh, tail end here. We don't need that anymore. And just tie that up. We can't get it tied really well because we've got clips in the way. But I could remove them and clip that there. If you want to, I'm going to leave quite a long tail on this because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. And there's enough there for another one anyway, so I don't know what I'm grumbling about. Um, I might put beads on it. I might, I might do anything with it. So I'm going to leave myself a long enough end that I, I have choices. So the only thing left to do now is to stick this onto the back of our uh, little folio. And doesn't that look grand? I think so anyway. It's a very smart back you have, sir. <laughs> so I'm going to um, put double-sided all around it and then call all in the middle and I think that will give us a good chance of uh, getting a firm fix. This little double-sided has almost seen the end of its days. But I have more. I always just like the idea of using double sided with a bit of glue over it, and I think that, you know, it's, it, we're safe then. Oh, where's my little white scissors? Oh, I don't know. But, you know, once again, this might be overkill. I sell my things, so, you know, I don't want them <laughs> falling apart. Um, but if it's for your own use and you're quite happy with the glue that you're using, then you don't need to do all this. 
belt and braces approach, as I call it. So that's around the outside and I'm just going to run a couple of bits up the middle. There we go. So burnish those down, take those off and then stick it on with collal. So if you choose not to do Edith um, for your project, and there's no reason why you should, um, you know, there's some beautiful kits on Etsy. Oh my life. They're fabulous, fabulous kits. Uh, so if you choose to use one of those, um, then please pop over to our Facebook group, which is Miss Paint a Lot's Junk Journal group, and leave us pictures. If, if you do need Edith, do the same thing as well. I love to see. I absolutely love to see what you're working on. Um, and when I think that, you know, some of you that are posting these fabulous pictures, you, you know, you're fairly new to the craft. Um, and it gladdens my heart, really, that we have this community and you, you're all you're all learning and running ahead. I've reached a stage where I can't teach you anything anymore. <gasps> Sad but true. Right, so glue on there and I'm putting glue over the double sided as well and as I say that will then just when I put it down it'll just give me a couple of seconds fiddle factor whereas if you don't it's down it stays down the double sided grips and you've had it Can't move it for love no money. Okay. I'm gonna be mad with the glue. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so this is the top up here. So let's get the bottom where we think it we want it to go. Which is about there. And the top should be about right. Yes, budget it over a little bit. There we go. Oh my goodness me. So just apply pressure. The, the double sided, once it grips, will keep it in place. So, you know, you'll be fine, but just Apply a little bit of pressure because it's quite thick, the card. And running your hands over it creates just a little bit of warmth as well and friction. Okay, I think we're there. It's got a little bit of glue. I'm surprised that's all the glue actually because I did go kind of mad. But the collar wipes up nicely, so. Right. Phew, that's it. Put my lid on my glue. And there we have it, a back page. So let's just see. Oh, look at the back of my folio. <laughs> it's so nice, isn't it? I'm really pleased with it. Um, I hope that you can follow that, that those instructions and that they weren't too garbled. I mean, the thing is, as I say, I haven't done this before, this exact thing before. So um, I couldn't be sure that it was dead right, but it looks pretty good to me. I mean, if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, <laughs> I could put, you know, a, a label on it. Look at that. If I ink drowned that, how nice would that look? It would look really nice. I'm fighting the urge at the moment just to put labels on everything. So um, I'll leave it like that and think about it for a while um, before I go sticking labels on it. So what can I say? Thank you once again for your company. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something. 
Uh, I hope you have a try at this, even if it's uh, paper from a kit. It, it's interesting to try and get that to line up properly. And, you know, as you saw, I had problems because there were different editions of the book. But they are the same colour. And uh, I'm overall, I'm quite pleased with the result. So thank you for joining me. I'll see you all again very soon. Take care all now. Bye. <laughs>